<laughs> Trust me, this video is gonna be fun. We are here to break the rules of chess and at the same time trap our opponent's pieces. A few months ago, I posted this video which went viral and attracted many likes within the shortest period of time. A very interesting video by the way, you can find the link in the card above. So what I was talking about in this video basically is the weak f7 pawn. Since it's only defended by the king, e.g. most of the games begin in a way of targeting the weak f7 pawn, let's say against the Karokan defense. Black takes in this position, knight to g5, and after pawn takes, bishop takes, the top played move here is knight to f6 by far, and that's when you can take advantage of this f7 pawn. If king takes, we now give black a check, and we'll end up winning the free queen on d8, because the black king cannot go back to e8. So that's just to demonstrate how weak the f7 pawn can be. Now, the traps that I'm about to show you are from Black's perspective. We are going to allow White to take advantage of the weak f7 pawn if he wants. I mean, we don't care. We are going to be allowing White to take this weak pawn. So trap number one, this may happen in the tracks like counter gambit. Where White begins with pawn to e4 and then we go e5, knight f3 attacking the pawn. Then we go knight c6. Bishop c4, again you can see white is simply targeting the weak f7 pawn. Then what do we do? Knight to f6, inviting knight g5 which creates a double threat on the f7 pawn. And this is what we want. Because right now you guys think we want to play the move pawn to d5. Nope, it is bishop c5. Allowing white to take this pawn if he wants to. And surprisingly enough, this opening is also playable in OTB classical matches. As you can see for yourselves, the idea is that if black takes with a knight attacking two of our big pieces, here we just go, bishop takes f2, check. And here, trust me, the best that white can do is just to go king f1, which is not even the savior by the way, but let's just look at what happens after king takes f2. Here we simply go knight takes e4 with check, and it doesn't even matter where the king goes, we are still going to have a slight advantage or a completely winning position. For example, if king e1, we simply go queen h5 check. If king e2, we simply met white in style after knight b4 check and the only move is king takes e4, then queen f4 checkmate as these squares are guarded by our knight. So you won't see that, maybe they are going to play something like pawn to g3 after queen h5 check. Okay, let's say pawn to g3 by white. Here we just simply take the pawn on g3, intending to take the rook with discovery check. And so if h takes g3, this is already winning. Queen takes h1 check. If bishop f1, which is the top played move, here we just castle short. Look at the threats. We want to take the knight. We are pinning the bishop on f1. And this is one way in which this defense can go. Let's look at another way. All right, this is the main line. Again, if king takes, we go knight takes e4 check. We saw what happened if, for example, white plays two of these moves. But what if white plays king e3 here? Well, we still go queen h4, that's the key move. And that's why you see them taking the poor rook on h8. But oops, this is a mating fall. After queen f4 check, if king e2, you already know the mating pattern. If king d3, we have knight b4 again check and the king will be forced to go back to e2, then it will be checkmate. So you see why playing king e2 anyways, just go queen f2 again. If king d3, you already know the mating pattern. Queen f4 checkmate. So clearly, this is bad for white. Let's look at another possibility before we move on to the next trap. All right, so knight takes f7, attacking our rook and queen. Then we take on f2 with check, king takes, knight takes e4 check. Now, instead of king e3, white may play king g1. Well, against this move, just go queen h4, intending to checkmate on f2 once again. If pawn to g3, well, you just take the pawn on g3. At worst, you're going to take the bishop on c4, which is undefended. Okay, so again, we sacrifice on f2. Instead of king f1, white plays, king takes on f2. Then we go knight takes e4 check. Still looking at the king g1 variation. Here we still go queen h4, intending to mate. Then instead of pawn to g3, you might see white playing queen f3. The idea is to take the rook on h8 on the next move. Well, we just go rook f8 pinning the knight again to the queen and if pawn to g3 which is the top played move according to the leeches database 
here we just take the pawn once again attacking the rook if h takes g3 now we take the bishop on c4 and also attacking the pinned knight and let's say if white plays pawn to d3 we just go queen takes f7 emerging with the clear exchange up plus a pawn advantage what more do you want white may decide to play bishop takes f7 check now here let me turn on the leeches database so that i show you the top played moves i mean how white goes from having a good position to a worst position all right so here we are just play king e7 next you want to play pawn to h6 winning this bishop and so the top played move here as you can see is bishop b3 after this just go queen e8 which they don't play most of the times you just want to develop your queen push pawn to d6 and again you can see the top played move here is castle short i only want to show you the top played moves you go pawn to d6 paving way for your light squad bishop they'll play pawn to c3 again the top played move preparing for pawn to d4 pawn push here is where you can now play bishop g4 at attacking this queen since the pawn on f2 is pinned to the king and again you can see the most played move is queen e1 then just go h6 forcing white's knight to be misplaced let's say knight h3 here we can even take the knight if we want doubling up white's pawns or play a better move queen d7 and as you can see Position is about negative 2.0 in favor of black, which is suffice to win the game. Now, you guys, I would love to know if at all you are enjoying these kinds of content where I just present a list of different traps in one video, just like this. And you can do that by giving this video a thumbs up so that I know. And don't just watch. You can also support my channel by simply subscribing so that you don't miss any future uploads. The link for my channel is in the description down below or in the card above. You can do that in less than 5 seconds during this short break. Okay, trap number 2. Again, this happens in the 2 knights defense. Freeze variation. White starts with pawn to e4. Then we go e5. Knight f3. Knight c6. Bishop c4. Again, eyeing the weak f7 pawn. So you just go knight f6. Let them play knight g5 with the same ideas again. And then you go point to d5 this time. We are going to play the freeze variation. E takes d5 is by far the top played move. Simply attacking our knight. But what are we going to do? Knight a5, the top played move? Nope. Knight d4, a sideline. And here, trust me, most of your opponents will think point to d6 renews the threat of capturing on f7. Ah, wait a second. We have the move queen takes d6 they are going to play knight takes f7 the top played move again attacking your queen and rook at the same time so here you just go queen c6 attacking the bishop and also i bowling the weak g2 pawn if rook takes h8 which they are going to do definitely you don't even take the bishop you take the pawn on g2 attacking the rook on h1 white has to save the rook you go queen e4 check if Queen e2 blocking the check, we are simply going to take that queen with our knight and it will be game over. And so you will see most of your amateur players blocking with a bishop. Whoops, that's checkmate. Because the bishop cannot take our knight, it is pinned to the king by our queen. Now, I'm not going to say much about this defense since I have a full video on this opening. I'm sure it has popped up in the card above just now. Trap number three. This happens in the Blackburn Gambit. White starts with pawn to e4. We go e5. Knight f3, knight c6. Then bishop c4. Now wait a second. Instead of playing the two knights defense this time. Or bishop c5. We go knight d4 immediately. Now I know this is a very dubious opening. But still playable in rapid blitz and bullet games. And well there is a way you can still hold on to the position. Even in classical matches I'll show you. So. What you will see most of your lower rated opponents playing is taking this free pawn on e5 since it is not defended by any piece. They will take the pawn and here I recommend you go queen g5 attacking the knight. Oh, you are not just attacking the knight. You also allowed white to take advantage of your weak f7 pawn. So they will take it with the knight attacking your queen and the rook on h8. Again, what do you do? Queen takes g2 attacking the rook on h1. 
they have to move their rook and whoops sometimes history repeats itself this is check if queen e2 blocking the check will simply take with the knight so you see your opponents blocking with a bishop and that's when you met on f3 because once again this bishop is pinned to the king it cannot take our knight on f3 let's go back okay so after e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 the italian game then we just play knight d4 see instead of taking the free pawn on e5 white may play the correct move knight takes d4 which is the major downfall of this gambit but let me show you how you can continue playing like a pro so e takes d4 that's what you play they'll play pawn to d3 that's the top played move you go pawn to c6 these are some of the responses black players failed to see after e takes d4 and so the key move is Pawn to c6 first. Why to castle short? I'm only showing you the top played moves by the way. And then here you just play knight f6. Now just to show you, bishop g5 which is the top played move is very bad as it is only going to allow us develop our pieces and castle short we play pawn to d6. This is how easy it is to come back into the game if you are playing against human beings with these dubious gambits. Now see, they may play pawn to e5 which seems to be very forcing. Here you just go pawn to d5. That's the secret move. So if e takes f6, which they are used to, you take the bishop. If rook e1 check, you always have bishop e6 defending the check. And to be honest with you, we always plan to castle long in the blackburn gambit. But if f takes g7, which is again the top played move, you simply take the pawn and well, sometimes even castling short works and I'm going to show you how. But the whole idea is that we would love to use this g file for our king's rook. If d takes, hey, we can do whatever we want here. Develop our queen, we castle long, but that seems to be too slow. The computer likes this move castling short because we are going to put our king on h8 and use this open file for our king's rook while we fix our pawn structure on the queen side and you can judge by yourselves i mean this is how you can continue playing the blackburn gambit even if your opponent thinks it's just a dubious gambit anyways now instead of knight takes f7 white here can also play bishop takes f7 with check now i don't like what most black players play here king e7 yeah it is okay but you're not trapping anything here white has an option to take your knight and retreat his light squared bishop so the move that stockfish likes here is king d8 which you should start playing because right now we are still attacking the knight and also the pawn on g2 okay now this is the trap that I love so much. The trap that I'm about to show you involves two gambits. The Russo gambit and the Lucchini gambit. White starts with pawn to e4. We go e5, knight f3, knight c6. They play bishop c4 again, targeting the weak f7 pawn. And then here, what do we do? We go directly pawn to f5. This is called the Ruzio Gambit or the Rousio Gambit, depending on your pronunciation. Now, wait a second. In all honesty, this is also played at Grandmaster level. If you don't believe me, check the Masters database here. You will see that Super GMs have played this with success. And what do we see here? Pawn to d3 is by far the top played move, which is where our trap lies. E takes f5 is not a good move at all. Here white has to play normally pawn to d3, so that if we take the pawn, they can take back with their d pawn and they'll be fine. But here we just continue with bishop c5. And ladies and gentlemen, this has now become the Gyoko Pianissimo Lucchini Gambit. So we have moved from the Russo Gambit to the Lucchini Gambit, which I presented in the video that has popped up in the card above. You need to check that out. Here we're just giving white one more chance to take advantage of the weak f7 square. So you see them going knight g5 most of the times. Once you see this move, they have lost the game. Just play pawn to f4, allowing them to occupy the f7 square. That's what they wanted. And that's when you go queen h4, completely giving them this rook on h8. By the way, if knight takes h8, there's a checkmate in one after queen takes f2. Checkmate. The most played move here castling short after which you now go knight f6 completely giving away 
your rook on h8 again. By the way, if white plays a passive move, we're just going to develop our rook to f8 and it will be fine. We'll just have a normal game. If knight takes h8 here, which is one of the most played moves, because white thinks there's no immediate checkmate coming this side. Well, just go knight g4 intending to checkmate on h2. If they play pawn to h3, hallelujah, you now go knight takes f2, indirectly attacking the queen on d1. The top played move here is rook takes f2, after which you take with the queen does check, and it doesn't matter what white does here, king h1 for example. Now wait a second, if you watched my previous video on the Lukini Gambit, which is already in the cut above, you know the reason why we have to play pawn to f3 here, I'm not going to repeat that. Anyways, we want to mate on g1. If queen takes f3, because our queen is defended by our bishop on c5, so queen g1 checkmate is coming. And that's why you will see white taking on f3 with his pawn. And what a second, what next? Well, we have this move pawn to d5 attacking the bishop. And trust me, bishop takes d5 is again the top played move. According to the Leech's database, that's when we play bishop takes h3. And there's no way for white to stop this mate which is coming on g2 or g1. For example, they may try to play a desperado move, bishop f7 check. We just go king f8. If knight g6, there's just nothing white can do to stop the mate. Anyways, to see more about this gambit, I suggest that you watch the video which is in the card above or in the description down below because I don't want to repeat the same things that I covered in that video. I don't want to stay.